YouTube, it's KT from the video. Today we are going to be talking about Miss Rona while I drink my morning coffee. The first issue with Miss Rona is that YouTube doesn't want me to say her real name. I don't know why, because there are tons of news stories on YouTube about this topic. So if the news can talk about it, why can't YouTubers talk about it? I keep trying to ask YouTube this question and they keep not answering me. They keep not answering me. So we're going to refer to it as Miss Rona today. If that still gets this video flagged, then oh well, I, maybe I'll censor it out. Maybe we'll just hear like a duck squeaky toy noise. If I have to edit this whole thing, I'm going to try and say it as little as possible just for that purpose, but y'all know what I'm talking about. It's, come on. A lot of creators took on the role of being the positive part of this outlook, giving us a form of escapism, giving us something to do by uploading videos for us to watch and not really mentioning the problem because we all have to deal with the problem every day. I really tried to do that, but every time I would think like, what video can I make to, you know, entertain the girlies? I just didn't want to make any of it. I, I I don't want to sit here and pretend like I'm having a great time inside my house in quarantine because I'm not. I'm not having a great time. I am bored. The highway is right by my house. I can look out the window and see people who aren't quarantining, but we'll get into that. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm lonely. I want to leave the house and I'm upset. <laughs> Last night I watched some more news as we do, and I got upset, and so now we need to talk about it, because before anything, my YouTube channel is a space for me to rant freely. I have a lot to say, as per usual, so this video might end up being a two-parter. If it is a two-parter, you, you can tell by the title. If it is one part, yay, I was concise for once in my life, but I doubt that. So, <laughs> so I would like to split my Rona speak up into categories, because like I said, I have a lot to say. There's the things that individual people are doing wrong. There's the things that businesses, corporations, and government is doing wrong. There's the things that I personally am concerned about. And then there's just a little wrap up, a few, you know, don't really fit in anywhere else ideas. So let's just jump right in. We, I need to get talking. I need to get talking. We've already discussed how YouTube won't let me talk about this. I don't know why YouTube is so adamant in their censorship, but then they also have news channels on you. Is CBS TV YouTube channel can talk about it. Why can't why, why can't I explain? Anyway, <laughs> so the first thing we need to address is savings Twitter, is financial independency Twitter, is hustle culture Twitter. Instagram is doing the same thing. Y'all need to stop it. We have seen that tweet floating around of the person who was like, if we can't afford to you know, not get paid for a few weeks and black people need to learn financial literacy or something like that. We've seen that tweet. We've seen it. We've seen the girlies like, my girls are getting paid. Multiple streams of income. We've seen it. We've seen the boys out there like, where's your savings? Where's your savings account? Where are your assets? Where's your... We're seeing it. And here's my question to you. Who out there just has an infinite amount of savings? You know, we've heard predictions that we might be in isolation and that companies might be closed until November. It's April, barely. Who has savings for an entire year's worth of expenses? I, did you say the year's worth of rent and a year's worth of food and a year's worth of gas and a year's worth of anything else you might need? Who's doing that? Who? A couple of months, like, yeah, we could have talked about that. If it's like you didn't get paid up one paycheck and you're falling to bits, we could have talked about that. But even then, it's insensitive because it's not considering, it's not considering that some people work paycheck to paycheck. Some people live paycheck to paycheck. Some people have kids. Some people have expenses. Some people don't have the degrees or the qualifications to get them a higher paying job. Some people are just in situations right now where they just can't, aff they, they just can't afford this. <laughs> it's, it's not unreasonable to not be able to afford a sudden crisis. Normally when people make a budget, they say, what can I afford? I can afford this apartment. I can afford this kind of car. I can afford these kinds of clothes. I can afford this much food. And I can still have a little bit of money to go out with my friends and can, 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 what is the word I'm looking for? Give to my savings account. I can afford this. But then all of a sudden, your job disappears. Your job was your income. So now you still got the same, the same apartment rent to pay, the same lease to pay, the same mortgage. I've seen people like, why didn't y'all just buy houses? 
you have to pay for that too. <laughs> Child, I see. Now you have the same mortgage slash rent. You have the same car note. You have the same student loans. You have the same need to eat and drink and live. But now you ain't got no job. A lot of y'all are on the Dave Ramsey plan. What is the Dave Ramsey emergency fund? Like a thousand dollars? How far are you gonna tell me you can stretch a thousand dollars to November? Please tell me that savings Twitter. Please come in my comments and tell me you're you're stretching a thousand dollars until November when your rent is eight hundred. Please, I would love to hear it. Entertain me. People save, but we don't save this much. Your expectations are unrealistic and ridiculous and I just don't I don't know why you have a year's worth of expenses saved up what were you planning to spend that on you were planning to buy something with that you were planning to make a down payment on a house you were planning to make a down payment on a car you were planning to invest it something like maybe you were buying a second house you were planning to do something with that no one just saves twenty thousand dollars for no reason now one thing that hustle culture twitter has been promoting is that even if you don't have a job, you still need to have other forms of income. You still need to find a way to make your money and collect your coins. Okay, fine. Fair enough. Fair enough. But let me tell you what's not fair enough. Let me tell you what's not a good way to make your coins. Are you listening? Everyone in the back, open those ears. But well, come on. Going to the store. Buying out all of the essentials, all the toilet paper, all the baby food, all the diapers all of the all of the irreplaceable essentials this was like insulin back in the day when people <sighs> getting all of the irreplaceable essentials whether you're a pharmacist or a regular person getting them and then reselling them illegally by the way for an upcharge all of the hand sanitizer all of the disinfectant wipes one one container of disinfectant wipes for $15 and you bought out the whole of the grocery store. That is not an acceptable side hustle. That's not it. That's because my girl Kenya, if y'all don't watch As Told by Kenya, I don't know how you ended up here. But my girl Kenya said it best. Your livelihood should not be worth more than someone else's life. If you have to kill a baby that couldn't get its baby formula because its only parent is a single father who can't afford a box of baby formula for $45 when the rent guy get paid and now he doesn't have a job, if you have to kill a baby to pay your rent, be homeless. <laughs> Y'all are being selfish. Y'all are being criminals. Y'all are promoting being criminals, acting like you're hustling. No. No, you're taking advantage of people and illegally re reselling products. No. Mm -mm. mm -mm. Y'all are adding to the hysteria. Y'all are creating... Your behavior is disgusting. Your behavior is disgusting, and I'm not surprised anymore. I, I can't be surprised at humanity's failings anymore. That would just take too much of my precious energy. I'm not surprised by you. I'm still disappointed, though. Like, are we serious? It was one, it was one thing to buy the toilet paper. Not an acceptable thing, but at least there are other options. At least I can wipe my butt with regular paper, with tissues, with the napkins, with a washcloth. At least I can just go take a shower. At least I have options. But then y'all said, let me buy the diapers. Let me buy the baby formula. Let me buy the hand sanitizer, the disinfectant wipe, and the disinfectant spray, and all the hand soap so nobody can be clean. Let me just murder my community. Y'all, y'all sickened me. I'm so sick of the human race. I, like I've heard it recently of this show, Tiger King. I've just heard of the things that go on and I'm, I'm so sick of y'all. I am, <laughs> I don't believe in the prison industrial complex, but some of y'all need to be in jail until we figure out a better solution. Go behind bars, locked up. Because y'all are disgusting. Your livelihood should not be worth more than someone's life. Be homeless. Be homeless. You could still survive on the street. The babies cannot survive without food. Be homeless. Next, if I just look through these trees across the street, I can see the highway. You know what I can see on the highway? I can see cars. 
passing by. What time is it? 12.08. I don't think all of you are going on lunch break. If you are, why do you need the highway? Baby girl, pack a sandwich. Go to the nearest Burger King. Why are you on the highway? There are so many cars passing by. One, two, three. There go four. Five, right there. He's going slow. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, cars on cars on cars. And I'm just like, are we not supposed to be so isolated? Did I make that up? Did I, like, fabricate that one in my head? Like, I swear we were supposed to stay home unless it was essential. I don't know where all of you were going, but I doubt it's essential. I've been sat up in this house for weeks. I am bored. My friends are back from school, but went to school out of state. They're back. I cannot go see them because I'm in this room. I have a boyfriend. I cannot go see him because I'm in this room. I have things I want to do. I... I want to have a, you know, at-home spa day like everyone's doing for quarantine. But I can't do that because I don't have any face masks. I don't have any Epsom salt. I don't have any bath bombs. And I can't go buy any because that's not essential and I'm not going to leave my house for garbage. I want to make some bread. There's no yeast in my house. Oh, well, guess I won't make any bread. <laughs> Y'all are just leaving your houses for nothing and I'm so confused. And I, I don't get it. But you know what? I don't even blame people for that. I don't. Because <sighs> tell people to just stay in their houses for an indeterminate amount of time. It's not. No. Like, no one's going to do that. <laughs> uh, we originally said until April 5th. Then it got pushed to April 14th. Now it's supposed to get pushed again. I'm telling you this is going to go on until November. No one's just going to stay inside for all of eternity. I blame the government. Mm, I have to blame the U.S. government for not doing anything, for not making any laws, making any rules. I can't actually blame the U.S. government because they're doing it on a state-by-state -state basis for some reason. So I guess I have to blame my state for not, you know, stepping it up. You feel what I'm saying? I don't think we need martial law, but I think we need something. I just gotta know this. You know what? That brings me right into my whole next category of, of, of things that are bothering me with Corona, and that is government businesses slash corporations. These, these en entities and enterprises that are owned and controlled by more than one person. Let's, let's talk about what they're doing wrong, because there's a lot, baby girl. So as I just discussed, I feel like the government is doing too little. It's, all, it's been a, just a pattern of too little too late, where, like... You know, we see Italy now. Lock down. Leave your house. Get a ticket. You ain't going nowhere for no kind of reason. Because this is just, it. it's a mess. It's a mess. The disease is spreading far too quickly and they need to keep people indoors. Right? Italy is a mess at the moment. They have a lot of cases. A lot of deaths. And we don't want any other countries on the world to get to that point. We don't. We don't. We need to look at Iraq. We need to look at China. We need to look at Germany, which is doing pretty bad. We need to look at America, which is doing pretty bad. And we need to say, hey, we need to protect these countries before they end up like Italy. But no. Um, the American government is just very reactionary. Just very, oh, it's spreading. Whatever, we'll fix it. Oh, it's spreading a lot. Mm. Okay, maybe, like, consider advising people to stay home. Oh, hospitals are out of masks. I mean, oh well, like, th there's just nothing. I feel like nothing is happening, nothing is changing. There's no new laws, there's no new regulations, there's no executive orders, there's nothing. And I, again, I don't want to be under martial law. I don't want complete control, but I want something. Like, can, can... <laughs> it's too little slate. It's all reactionary. Like, I feel like it's going to get past the point of, like, past the point of no return before the government is like, hey... Maybe we should, like, really enforce this lockdown, and by then it'll be too late, because a million people will be infected. I... Well, foolery, foolery. We need to talk about landlords still requiring their tenants to pay rent. We need to discuss this. Okay, so most, not most, some landlords are not actually rich. They just, like, bought a second house. They just, like, own a fourplex. That's it. Like they, there's not like mountains and mountains of wealth behind them. Some people don't 
have the means to afford this. A lot of landlords haven't actually finished purchasing the place that you are living, your house, your apartment, your complex, your 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 do whatever. They haven't they haven't finished buying it. You're paying for it basically. Your rent pays for the mortgage of wherever you live and a little bit more so that they can make a profit. That's usually how this works. And after like, you know, 10 to 30 years of having tenants depending on their plan, they'll have paid off the mortgage and will be making 100% profit. Some landlords aren't yet at the point where they've paid off where you're living. So they can't, sorry, an unfamiliar car driving very slowly. They can't just not require rent because guess who they still have to pay? They still have to pay the bank. They still have to give the bank a check saying, hey, I'm still paying for this place. Because what happens if they don't give the bank that check, the bank forecloses? And then not only did they lose out on an investment, but you lose out on a place to live. It's not going to be cute. So because the bank is still requiring these mortgage payments, landlords, whether they are millionaires or not, still have to pay. If you were a millionaire or a billionaire, yeah, you maybe have more of an opportunity to like fill in some of the gaps where your tenants can't be there. But the point is, the bank still wants the money. So somebody has to bring it up. So I understand that it's very hard to be like, hey, I don't have a job anymore. How do you expect me to pay the rent? But you have to understand that the landlord is in the same position to where if you can't pay the rent, they also don't have a job anymore because their job was being a landlord. Now they don't have a job. They can't pay their bills. It just is a chain of everything falling apart. So the problem, in my opinion, is not really the landlords still requiring rent. It is the bank not having any kind of contingency plan on like, hey, maybe we can um, pause our loans for a couple of months. Maybe we can just give people a second to get their marbles in order. The bank can't do that because once the bank falls apart, the whole economy is just gone. <laughs> it's just going to fall into the gutter, but we'll get into that later. It's, it's an issue of there just being too many levels to it. You're a tenant, you have to pay rent to maybe your manager. The manager has to give that rent to the landlord. The landlord has to give that rent to the bank. The bank has to give that to another. Who knows? Who knows? It's just a lot of layers of people needing to pay people. It's just a lot of debt being owed around places. And that is what is causing this difficulty to where like, yeah, you don't have a job, but you still need to pay rent because I still need to pay rent. So I get the issue, but I'm kind of just like, what are we going to do at this point? And I feel like what we need to do is just have the banks figure it out. Like, I don't know what to tell you, sis. Just get it to Your landlords don't have jobs. Their tenants are broke. Like, figure it to <laughs> Speaking of people not having jobs, let's talk about people who do have jobs or who just don't have jobs. Let's talk about both. First thing that companies are doing wrong is just suddenly firing people. Like Sephora, for example, who's just laying all the girlies off left and right. These companies are playing you. I hope you know that. I hope you know these companies are playing you. Sephora, child, you are nowhere near bankruptcy. You're not. I don't even know if you're near, like, breaking even. Better yet, being in the red. Like, you're... You're a multi-million, maybe even billion dollar corporation. Honey, two weeks is not enough time of not even no pay because you still have online of just less income for you to just start firing everyone. Two weeks? I don't know, I'm picking Sephora because they're a very specific example. We can see a lot of Sephora employees getting laid off at once, but Sephora is not the only company doing this. We have million and billion dollar corporations. By mass firing their employees when they can afford not to. When they can afford to just have them not get paid for a while. When they can afford to still pay them even though they're not working. Or when they can afford to give them just less hours. Then we have the issue of companies who are keeping their employees on but not giving them any hours. What are you going to do at a job where you don't work? There is only one solution to this problem that I see. And that is temporary layoffs. What is a temporary layoff, you ask? It's when you lay someone off, 
so that they can apply for unemployment and get the benefits there and still be able to pay their bills and their landlord can still pay their bills and the, the society doesn't fall apart. You temporarily lay someone off, tell them, hey, go apply for unemployment, go get you some food stamps, go call up Obamacare, I'll see you when this is all over and I'll rehire you and you can just like proceed as normal because we don't need you on the storefront right now because the storefront is closed. So go get your check somewhere else. When the store will reopens, we'll give you a call. Like, I don't understand why that is so hot. Because it's essentially the same thing. Is it not? You still get to fire the employee, as Sephora did massively. Or you still get to not pay anyone, as these companies who aren't firing people are doing. They're just having them sit there with no check. But instead of your employees being screwed with no check and a job so they can't apply for unemployment... You tell them, hey, you temp, you don't have a job right now. They can get their unemployment. And then when your company goes back to functioning normally, they can come back and get their job. I don't understand what the problem is. Child, corporate greed is too much for me sometimes. I really, I can't. You're screwing people over by either giving them a job with no hours, which is no job, firing them with no just nothing, which is no job, or keeping them on and not giving them enough hours. If you have, you know, employees who are not essential, not not essential, who the job isn't essential to them, like if you are hiring teenagers who got this job just to have some pocket change, sure, you can cut Becky's hours from 15 to 4. If you are employing full-grown adults who use this job to pay their bills, temporarily lay her off, at least talk to her about how is somebody going to feed their kids on two hours of work a week? <laughs> Next, we need to talk about these Corona commercials. Y'all jumped on this quickly. Y'all jumped on this so quickly. I am so surprised. Y'all dove into these Corona commercials and I don't understand because they're, they're weird. They're disturbing. I don't like them. I don't want to see them. <laughs> Y'all have seen these Corona commercials and they came so quickly. Like I'm telling you, a day after school closed, I was seeing Corona commercials and I'm just like... Did your ad teams have nothing better to do? I mean, I guess not. That is their whole job. But like, geez, it's already on TV. And they're just very, like, they just rub me the wrong way. A lot of the commercials are very weird. Like, I saw one for a beach. I don't know which beach. And I'm not trying to get sued. So I'm a, a beach. And it was like, you know, here's the beach. It's so luck, so gorgeous, as beach commercials do. And it was showing, like, old white people running around with their kids on the beach. Okay. And then it's like, we know you're at home right now. And, like, that pleasant, that pleasant female voice that they use for these voiceovers. We know you're away right now. But when you can return, we'll still be here. The beach is going nowhere. And it's very much like, give us your money as soon as you can. <laughs> that's, that's what I heard through that commercial. Give us your coins as soon as they're as soon as they're available. And I've also seen a lot more that aren't even like, hey, whenever you can pay us. I've seen more that are like, pay me today. Pay me today. There's a lot of emails like, we know that these are trying times. We're so sorry. We hope you and your families are staying safe. Please, you know, do these tips, stay sanitary, self-isolate, blah blah blah. Also, did you know that we have an online store and you can still buy online? You can't pay your bills, but you sure can buy our t-shirts. It's just so weird. Like, it's a little corporate greed. I can't. It's a lot of just capitalism. And there's some companies where I'm like, okay, you're telling us about something new that you are doing to adjust to Corona, like Burger King. They're offering free delivery, free contactless delivery. Fine, Burger King. You can make that commercial because I wouldn't have known that otherwise, A. And I'm, you know, stuck at home, still need to eat, and I might want Burger King, B. You can tell me that. You can. But from, you know, a company, I'm not going to name a specific company because I don't, a company that sells plants. I don't need your commercial telling me that these are trying times and you hope I'm staying sanitary and buy some plants. Like, it's just, it's just, it's just the weirdest ad campaigns I've ever seen. They just give me this sense of like, what is wrong with y'all? You know people are dying and you're concerned about whether or not I'm buying your headbands? Like, it's just too much. 
please let me know in the comments if I'm crazy. These commercials are weird, aren't they? The ones that are like, hey, when this all goes away, guess where the first place you need to spend your money is? This here beach. This here theme park. Come on down to 17 Flags. I, the, weird. It's weird. And then there's also the ones, like I said, that are very much like, Hey, we know everything is rough and hard and that sucks, but you know what you can do while you're in quarantine to keep yourself entertained? You can, like, I don't know, buy our glam box and then do your makeup and go nowhere. Yay! Oh my gosh, you can buy our candles and have your whole quarantine space smell good. Ooh, I hate those. Do not tell me things that you are selling to help me with quarantine. No. Unless you are a Walmart, a grocery store, something like that, where you already had soap and hand sanitizer on your shelves, don't sell me soap and hand sanitizer and face masks. Send that stuff to people who need it. It costs it tolls. We'll get into that later. Don't, don't tell me how much I need your mugs to get through. Don't tell me how much I need your mugs to get through quarantine, because I don't. I have my own mug. And you're weird. Your marketing is weird. I'm, I'm weirded out. I'm turned off. This time has really brought out not only people but companies as true colors. And most of y'all true colors are ugly. I don't want to say most. Maybe it's just the loudest people. Y'all's true colors are the colors of garbage. Y'all's true colors suck and I don't ever want to see them again. You are none of the colors in the rainbow. No, darling, you're ugly. Stay away from me. I'll see you guys in part two, in which case I will continue this talk. I have a lot more to say, but I don't want this video to be 50 years long. We're going to continue on with the things that the businesses do wrong. and then talk about some of my personal concerns in part two. So I will see you guys then. Please like this video. Leave a comment on some of your thoughts too, because there is a lot to discuss here. And uh, click some of these links to keep yourself entertained while I work on part two. I will see you guys then. And until then, doodaloo. Should have. You should have already clicked something. I don't. Hello.